moving in, they still need to educate our children. So that's a two-part question that I have. Sure. I think, you know, when you talk about, and I probably have one of the most changing districts more than the other um, council person, mm -hmm. primarily um, Point Breeze being ground zero for uh, development. And probably one of the key challenges is when it, when it comes to providing a level of affordable housing is the lack of subsidies that are coming from the federal government, which we normally had at one particular point in time. Now in Point Breeze, probably the average house right now uh, is about 350, 400,000, right? And so the affordable housing projects that we put out RFPs for may go on the low end 125, right? Maybe on a high end, um, 225, right? Now, some folks will say, well, Councilman, uh, you know, some people can't afford um, to move in a home that costs 125, right? Uh, but we subsidize um, the development through the public land that we have um, jurisdiction over. So at least that's how I've been pro approaching it because at the end of the day, um, on the private side, the market is going to develop with the council person support or not. No one can stop a developer from coming in and privately buying private land mm -hmm. and building on that land. So we try to use the public land as a way to subsidize the developer as an incentive so they can say, you know what, I'll build this affordable unit at this particular price point to be supportive of trying to provide some level of affordable housing to make sure we have a, a balanced approach and development that's taking place. And we also will work with uh, PHA to also provide a level of subsidized housing at a certain price point that can be supportive of individuals who may not uh, be able to purchase a home for 125. Now, I also come from the mind frame that, um, and I have met young families um, who say, Councilman, um, my, I work, my fiance work, um, I, I can purchase a home for 125. My credit is okay. Can you help me get into a first time home buyers program and so um, it's not an easy issue um, to address because obviously you don't want blight inside your neighborhood and we don't want to live next to a home where uh, an abandoned property but um, the subsidies that we normally would receive from the federal government to help us provide um, a level of affordable housing just isn't there as it used to be so I have been working and using public land as a way to incentivize for developers who want to build affordable housing. When, when you talk about the issue of schools, I'm a firm believer, and statistics have shown, uh, the most successful schools have what? Community involvement. Mm -hmm. um, last night, Councilwoman um, Jenny Blackwell and myself uh, were out at John Bartram High School, high school where uh, I created an organization called um, the Friends of John Bartram High School primarily so the community organizations and working with the chairwoman of education can wrap our arms around that school, right? And I have seen consistently as neighborhood changes throughout uh, my district, you have a Friends of Chester Arthur School because the neighbors moved into the neighborhood and said, wait a minute, our children need a school to go to, it probably won't be private, we're gonna adopt this school. Same thing with nice. uh, E.M. Stanton School, mm -hmm. Friends of Stanton, they wrapped their arms around Stanton School. When the school district wanted to shut down Stanton, I created a partnership with the Goldenberg Group and EM Stanton to keep the school open, but it was driven by the residents yes. and the parents who had children attending that school. And so I believe as, you move, as we move forward, uh, when you have development projects that are taking place and rather they're new residents or old residents, everyone wants good schools. Mm -hmm. And it's only, only where the schools are gonna be improved is that as if the parents and the community wrap their arms around the school and really uh, make sure the district is being accountable to providing the resources for the school, but most importantly, there's a level of community and parent involvement. So how can this tool help in those two issues? How can this tool this help? This particular tool? Yes. This particular tool is data-driven, and so based upon what the presentation has showed thus far, the information is public safety, education, housing stock, will provide us the data to determine how we should spend our, our priorities in terms of resources. Or maybe you may say, Councilman, based upon the data that's in this tool right here, we need to focus our efforts in this area as opposed to that area.
Thank you. Uh, Representative Parker wanted to chime in. Sure, thank you. And let me just say good evening to everyone and the Council President Clark and members of Council. Thank you so very much uh, for making this tool available to the public. Uh, first and foremost, I can't be here without asking, making a plug. You know that tab that said council districts? It would be wonderful if it was a tab that said legislative district. <laughs> and it would be wonderful if it was a tool that said congressional district. I don't know, Ira, if that's a, a matter of making some sort of technical sort of minor addition. But listen, since you've already made the investment, I thought I'd make the ask. OK? Uh, with, with that being said, uh, and, and Council President Clark and members of council, when you all do a good job, um, you are always so modest about the work that you've done. The fact of the matter is, and I don't profess to be the most technically a savvy person you know, in our city, but I have never seen a tool available for use by the community at large that accesses information in the detail that it does with, with provided in this program. Uh, with that being said, somebody's going to be here today to say, you couldn't access Y, you couldn't access Z, but the fact that you've mentioned that this is a growing tool, that you're going to have these listening tours and the information that this young lady, she had a lot of great recommendations about what should be added. Local community development corporations that are making an investment. All of those things are important, but you will enhance those as the process moves forward. So I want to thank you for that. Re Council, Council person Johnson brought up a key point regarding affordable housing. He mentioned another level of government that wasn't local. He talked about the federal government's investment in affordable housing in the city of Philadelphia. It made me think about the importance of intergovernmental cooperation. Mm -hmm. Like when you see that list of recreation centers in a particular neighborhood, council members work to invest dollars in those recreation centers, but you also elect people to the state who also secure dollars, who can make investments into those recreation centers. State senators and Congress people. So uh, aside from it being a local tool, I want you to also look at this as being a tool that will empower the public to ask the tough questions about how effective we've actually been in getting our jobs done, right? So if you can go to point to a Sherelle Parker, if the council president and the council members, you know, find a way to put that state legislative tab up there, you should be able to go to the district and look at the challenges in the particular district and say, now tell me, since you've been here, what have you done to, to change uh, these things? So it empowers you. So with that being said, I just want to say to you, Council President Clark, and to you, members of council, this, is a, this was a, a good thing for you to do, but this is also an, an empowerment tool that will educate the citizens of our city to ask the people who they elect tough questions about whether or not they're representing them in an adequate fashion. Thank you for having the courage to do that. Um. Representative, those, those um, house, house rep districts and senatorial districts will be on the site tomorrow. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for your impassioned participation as always. Um, no, it is important, it is actually, I mean, the bottom line is, you know, there's a lot of information about my district as an example. There, there are some challenges in parts of my district. And somebody might say, well, somebody said a whole lot, right? So and that's, the, that's a simple reality, right? But somebody said, well, Darryl, why would you put that information out there? Isn't that going to be a problem for you? I said, the people in that neighborhood know that it's a problem, right? I don't have to put it on a map, right? But the question is, and what people want to know, what are you going to do about it to make a change and make a difference? So that's why it's important. So uh, we relish the opportunity to work on these very challenging properties. As, as Councilman Jones said earlier, uh, he used some chi Chinese proverb. I don't know exactly what you said, Councilman. But the bottom line is, what we look at, um, as some people might say it's a liability, a vacant lot in Councilman Johnson's district is actually an opportunity because that land down in parts of his district is very valuable. And it can, in fact, be used as an incentive, as equity into a development deal that will provide affordable housing. So there's a way that we can make this thing work for us, and that's why I think it's very important for us to have this level of participation. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Okay. My name is Ruth Conyers. I'm um, in the um, 22nd district, Police dist District. But what I've been trying to do is find out, I wanted to buy a couple of properties, particularly properties in my 
on my block where I live, but it's hard to find the owner. So if I want to address a letter to the owner, if I go to where the taxes are, sometimes they don't have a forwarding address through the taxes. So I wanted to know how do you get in touch with the owner of a property to express your interest in buying that property? And will this Philadelphia Community Sub Sustainable Initiative have a component like that so that if you look up a property and you want to find out who the owner is and you want to forward a, a letter to them, could you find that information through that initiative? Let me make sure I understand. There's a property, a particular property in an area. Did you that say I, what, what area did you say? I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear I'm in the 22nd Police District. 22nd. I'm in your okay, district. Okay, that's in our district. Okay. And I wanted to, there's some properties I was interested in, but when I go to find the owner, okay. I can't get a viable address to send a letter to them. And I was wondering, in looking, up, looking into the Philadelphia Community Sustainability Initiative, can one locate the owner, because I thought the ownership of a property is, public, is, a, is a public issue, and if I can't get to the owner, you know, send a letter to them, and right. it comes back let, to you, yes. Let us, let us try and answer that for you. The CSI will not solve that problem, because the, the problem is that the, it's the owner's responsibility to put their mailing address provide that to the city of Philadelphia. I think one of the problems that many people face is that the owner is deceased. And you're not going to be able to locate them. Often a vacant lot or a vacant house, the mailing address for the tax bill is that vacant lot and vacant house. If there's an off-site address, that should be listed and you should be able to, to mail to that. But often, I mean more, nine times out of 10, if it's vacant and tax delinquent, the owner has, has there's uh, the owner has died and there are no heirs taking care of it, so there's no way we could the, that data does not exist to put in here. I guess, I guess that's the best way I can answer it. Well, let me let me let me we'll give a little follow up on that one. So we have this right now in the city. We have this informal process that if there is a lot or in some cases a property and it's tax delinquent we can't find the owner, we kind of like make a phone call over to folks in, in judicial sales and they put it up on the sheriff's sale and the city, depending on the neighborhood, can bid on the property and if they're successful, they can work with you to try and get the property in your hands, right? But that's just an informal, haphazard process. So what the city of Philadelphia did, uh, working with, uh, again, the state, uh, and Councilwoman McKeown Sanchez was one of the um, uh, point persons on this, is created the Philadelphia Land Bank. And the Philadelphia Land Bank gives us an opportunity to go after properties and pick up properties, acquire them without exposing them to sheriff sale. Part of the problem, when the city puts a property on sheriff sale, the city can only bid up to the lien. So if the lien is 4,000, we can only bid up to 4,000, and then somebody else might bid way beyond that, and they will be successful bidder, and they may put something in that property that's not conducive to what you all in the neighborhood would like to see. So that land bank, in a very strategic way, will give us an opportunity to acquire property to be a part of the neighborhood that we plan for, not speculators or some other unintended use like the, my good friend talked about earlier uh, in some of the houses in the particular neighborhood. So the land bank, I believe we just passed the strategic plan. Yeah. And the board, the board uh, members will be introduced this Thursday, the resolution, and then once it's up and operational, we'll be in a better position to help in those particular cases. Right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Benita Cummings, and I am the director of Strawberry Mansion Community Concern. I wanted to uh, thank the council um, for allowing us without prejudice to um, be able to have comment um, on this initiative process. I just wanted to ask about um, the land bank and the 2035 and some of the programs that are out in front of the sustainability initiative and how um, to bring those other projects to in, in, in accord with the sustainability initiative. Um, the, the land bank process didn't directly come to my community, so we weren't able to 
directly have a conversation about land and how we look at land in, our, in the Strawberry Mansion community. Um, some of the concern is in the 1800s, we may not have known who was lynched for their land. But in 2014, I know that that house down the street land belonged to Miss Mary. And if we're gonna be sustainable in, our, in this initiative, um, equality, so we wanna be fair to the families that that land also belongs to. So um, some of these projects are out in front of us. So I just wanted to uh, find out for the uh, initiative if we can bring some of those um, projects together to really look at them comprehensively as compared to fractionated. And um, in terms of the initiatives, uh, housing and the residents of communities, um, I don't know if it's looking at the families who want to expand that are already in the community. There are 500 families who have children, daughters and sons that may be coming home from college or who may have be, be living at home with parents who we're not looking at as habitating right in those same neighborhoods that they are presently in. Um, and I just also wanted to ask whether or not the initiative is actually addressing um, the development and particularly through public, public dollars, um, looking at income, whether we actually have put the monetary value to what really sustains the community. We have to have income. We have to have families actually get dollars. So, you know, with our public money, we need to make sure that African American people are receiving those dollars, which is not necessarily as fair and equitable right now. So I just wanted to ask if those things could come together. The, the, the land bank is out in front of this initiative. 2035 projects are out in front of this initiative and whether we could, or whether the council would consider kind of bringing them together comprehensively and looking at employment. Thank you. Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you. I have been um, very concerned about 2035, and I think all of us need to focus on that and determine what 2035 should mean for each of our neighborhoods and in each of our communities. Um, 2035 should be the kind of develop it, a development and neighborhood input that we want to have. I don't want city planning planning for my 2035. I want the neighborhoods planning for 2035. So I'm very, very concerned about that. Happy to work with anybody, talk with everyone. But people have a right to self-determination, and they have a right to determine what 2035 is and should look like. Thank you. And, and as a follow-up to that, um, if you look in your book, um, you will see that, and I know the land is, real estate has been a popular topic tonight, as it normally is. But the indices in the document actually reflect a lot of different issues with respect to commerce index that talks about uh, economic development opportunities. Uh, we talk about individuals' wealth. Uh, from a personal perspective, we talk about the prosperity index. So they are all issues, and that's why we want to make sure this is a comprehensive approach to making every neighborhood and every resident in those neighborhoods neighbors of choice. Um, the land bank in particular, if you look in one, of, I think it's in the housing index, the land bank will actually be an integral part of our ability to move forward on this project. So you'll hear a number of those things uh, that are actually gonna be a part of this process. So that's gonna, we can't achieve what we need to achieve in, 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 in total without having an opportunity to, to deal with the land bank so we can centralize that whole process. Uh, we, we, we absolutely will. Yes, ma'am. Two. Oh, we got time issue? Two more questions? All right. Um, Mr. Mr. Carter, for the record, Mr. Carter has said there are only two more questions. So, <laughs> I understand. No, we have a time frame. And this will not, understand, as we said earlier, uh, this is kind of the kickoff meeting uh, the subsequent meetings will actually be out in your individual neighborhoods. So we'll, we'll be out and we'll, so we can have a very detailed conversation about your particular neighborhoods. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. 
My name is Sandra Norris Houghton. I'm the executive director of New Freedom Theater. We're located at Broadmaster in North Central Philadelphia. I also represent Legacy Landmarks, a preservation organization. And my question actually is for Ira. Is there some way that we can connect the University of Pennsylvania's cultural blocks information with this initiative? Cultural blocks specifically study detailed the cultural institutions in Philadelphia, and they identified the fact that only 1%, 1% of all foundation money went to arts organizations in so-called disadvantaged communities, 1%. So if there's some way we can match their study with this community sustainability initiative, and also to identify long-term cultural arts institutions as part of the initiative. I'm just wondering if that's possible. The answer to that is yes. Some of the information from Culture Blocks is actually already in the tool. Okay. Um, so you'll know where the, uh, I think the Culture Fund grants went and some of the other related kinds of things. But in as much as we also built Culture Blocks and having built this as well, we can migrate a lot of that information across. So the answer to your question is yes. Okay, and the, and the preservation, the historical commission, the list of the historic resources in each community, are they incorporated or can they be? Uh, they're not now incorporated, although I think that we could get listings of, mm -hmm. uh, we, we can get the, the footprints of the eligible areas. Okay. I, the, the answer to your question is yes, but yes. they're not now in there. Okay, but thank yes. you very much. Sure. Oh, good evening. Uh, one, one second, one second. Um, what am I supposed to say? There's a link on the website, the council website, that you will be able to get your questions in, questions and comments. So if you go on the council website, you can give your uh, questions and comments as a part of this process. Good evening, council. Uh, my name is Keith Harris. I'm the chairman of the 28th Ward and a long-term committee person. Um, um, I, I'd just like to say um, first, um, you can look up addresses for abandoned property through OPA. They have off-site off addresses sometime, and also you got to check the uh, states and wills, and you make it find that, that address. Um, my, my question is, um, I know this is a work in progress here, like you know what I mean, the, 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 and I want to thank you for the collaboration because the data that the community and city council can acquire in these communities is. Um, um, it can be really, um, uh, um, actually, uh, it can build safety issues. My issue is, because I come from Strawberry Mansion, uh, uh, North Philadelphia, Councilman Clark's district, and our main concern is um, uh, crime and drugs. And with this initiative, um, with the data that the community will put in, will it'll make it easier and faster to get responses from the 311 far as getting the police out here until we get a hold on the, the crime issue. Um, and also, not just the crime issue, um, that creates blight in our community when we have people breaking in houses and someone makes their call. You know, we probably need a qu quicker response after, you know, once we build this, all this data in this system. So I think that, that, that's why I think this, um, this uh, initiative is, is um, is really, really, really great. It'll, it'll be wonderful for our communities. And so I just wanted to ask that. Will, will, will the response time be, be, be more rapid? Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, for the record, uh, Councilman Clark is not the only one who represents Strawberry Mansion now. <laughs> I'm claiming my little piece of North Philly, too. Uh, thank you. Uh, but, what, 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 but you're abs absolutely right. I took uh, an opportunity to ride around in my new divisions uh, over the last election just to get a sense of what was going on. And um, what the, so the difference between other areas in my district and the things that come out naturally, oh, there's the councilman while I got him, da 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 da, is very different than what I experienced in Strawberry Mansion. And it, this data that we can access validates, quantifies some of the opinions that some of the residents had. Like in some areas, we're talking about saving the spotted owl and the environment, and other people talking about saving their sons and daughters. Yeah. And, it, and it's real. 
Uh, and so as we start to make those budgetary decisions, whether we invest in a, a, a new uh, 311 or improved 311 or, you know, whatever, 911, we, we need to use this data to say that in this particular area in Strawberry